work days, dependencies, predecessors, lag. That's what we are talking about in lead gen today. When you create your first section and you filled out your details, your task description, your reference links to all your reference checklist and um, other uh, documents uh, for that particular task, you allocated your responsible uh, person who's in charge for that, their email addresses are all in here. That's the time when we uh, want to put in a start date for the project. So the start date for the project will always be the first uh, date for uh, under the start date section so that is a super simple to, to put in just double click on the sheet and it, uh, it a calendar would pop up and then you can select whatever date that you think your project will start uh, the thing is that these start dates is dependent upon work days so if there are no work days that you allocated for that particular task this there will be no start date. That basically that basically means that there is no work day there. So you gotta enter at least one uh, as your work day, so that you can then add a date in there, and then it'll start calculating the date next to it. By default, Saturdays and Sundays aren't working days, and you will see that this is going to skip the calculation for it there is no need for um, you cannot manually change the end date uh, because it is all um, calculated automatically based on the start date and the end date of the previous task um, and the number of uh, work days and the predecessor and lag so uh, there's nothing that uh, that can be done here manually however you can change the start date for any task to um, uh, to start whenever you want to you want it to start manually. So if I was to put um, two days for the task right now, the next task in line, it'll automatically start the next day. So it's basically taking the second of November as a full day for uh, for completing that task because it requires one working day to complete. The second thing is uh, we've got um, two days over here and it's gonna go in for two days. So if I double click this thing and say, look, the second, this task doesn't need to start on the third, it can start on the ninth. I can have manually now entered that number and it will turn blue. And then it will start calculating that date from that point onwards. Now, if the third task in line, for example, let's say I add one more day, that will automatically take the end date from that date and leave the uh, leave the weekends off or uh, whatever date that we've allowed for under the holidays section. So um, that's how it would go. But if you want this, uh, let's say you want the third task to start immediately after the first task finishes, um, all you have to do is come under the predecessor and see the row number, which is seven for that task. We put in number seven and it'll automatically update that date for us. So that means that it's picking it up the next day. So we only had this line here that was um, uh, that was independent because it is not dependent upon um, this task, the previous task finishing. So that's how this works. So if I was to say that I wanna add lag after this task for another two, three days, for example, I can put that in and it'll update the date um, over here so what this is doing is it's looking at so that lag because there is a predecessor right here what it is doing is that it's looking at 2nd of November adding three working days to it and then um, then adding one day to it so that's how this date is is getting calculated because we've got a predecessor here and we've got a lag that means we are waiting another three days before we start this task which is going to take one day um, um, in this section. So if let's say we've got nothing in the middle, we've got no task, we've just left it blank. For example, uh, we can delete this out and uh, you can leave that blank, which is fine and come straight to the next task and enter the number of work days that it would take to complete that task. So let's say for example, six, and you'll notice that it will update 
the dates over here automatically. So after 6th of November, um, it ends. this task over here ends on 6th of November. So if you look at why does it start on 9th, because 7th and 8th were holidays. Now, if I was to add a number for lag, so let's say I was to add another, um, another two days uh, lag on this thing. And because there is no predecessor over here, what this is going to do is going to look at, first it's going to look at uh, 9th of November. So that's where, um, that's where it was supposed to start. But now that we've got a lag of two days, it's going to delay the start from 9th of November for two days. Um, if there is a predecessor over here, it'll automatically take the end date for that time and then add the lag uh, to it. So this is um, uh, this is how it would do uh, normally as well. So you can have a delay start by using the lag without a predecessor, or you could have a delayed start based on a, a previous task's end date. So um, that is also possible. So um, uh, these are the two things that we that we need to remember. So let's say we add another section to it. So we are still building our um, our project plan uh, or project schedule and uh, we want to add another section to it so let's go to the next section so under the next section let's just call it task 2 and call it subtask 2.1 and i'll just copy that here um, uh, just for the for the for argument's sake now again there won't be any dates getting populated here until there is a work day allocated to that so let's say we add two over here and you'll notice that you know suddenly it will automatically pick up the last date for the last task over here and then these dates will get calculated so if i was to add another line in the middle go in here and i say you know this this task is going to take five days i forgot to add it uh, that is also fine it'll then take 20th of november and start the task add five days to it um, if there are um, holidays or saturday sundays in there it'll add those days to it and then after that point, it'll automatically pick up um, from where um, the last task in this section ends um, to start this. So this is how uh, work days and dependencies uh, work. Uh, the other thing is you can't have a task that's over here dependent upon a task that's at the bottom. Uh, the reason is that, for example, if I was to add um, let's say this predecessor was row 18 for example so if I put um, uh, not 14 let's say I put 18 so I'll get an error message saying lead GAN can't calculate start date or end date please check predecessor to make sure there is no loop because right now it'll it's actually going into a loop so it will not do that calculation um, for you so predecessor will always have to be that means that it's already come before that task so while you are planning it um, uh, you need to make sure that your project is planned correctly and the tasks that need to happen before um, uh, are actually added in sections above um, then we can have a predecessor so say for example this task instead of 30th of November which is basically ending here this was to start uh, immediately after let's say row 9 over here so the task that we've got in row 9 ends on 6th of November I can easily come in and put 9 over here and it will update the date for that section any task following that point will automatically pick up the end date from um, uh, from the previous task so we have to remember that if I've done that but now I want instead of the last task uh, let's say I want this task to um, to actually start in line with uh, with this I'll, all I have to do is ask uh, put in the predecessor for when I want this task to uh, start immediately after um, uh, for example here I'll just come and put in 14 and then this task that will change uh, because the predecessor is now immediately after row 14. So any task that then comes in will automatically become um, uh, will become dependent upon the task finishing earlier. I can again come in and change this and say, look, this task is supposed to start. Um, I'm not going to wait for that. I'm going to start this on 11th of November. So that's fine. However, just remember again 
that any task that comes after that task will automatically pick up the end date from the previous task. So if you, if you want this to be dependent upon, let's say the end of this, we can put in number 19. That means the, the start date will need to, um, it will need to start immediately after. So that's pretty, that's pretty much it. So if I now click on uh, refresh Gantt, um, this will then um, show the Gantt chart uh, on the other side. And then we know that red dots uh, represent that these tasks are dependent upon something that's not immediately above them. Um, and, um, uh, and that's how, uh, that's how this would, that's what, how this would, this would actually work. So you can keep adding more sections to it. You can add a section, another section of five. Um, you can then, uh, bring your cursor down and add another section of 15 if you wanted to. This is unlimited and this is, and the number of uh, columns and dates and everything is 100% dynamic. Um, the only thing that you have to remember is that no dates can be calculated if there is no task in this section. So let's say this is blank. There won't be any dates calculated here either because we don't have anything, any, any uh, task assigned to it or a task ID assigned to it. So I will need to put in uh, some sort of a task name in every section um, so that um, I've got um, I I've got a task ID uh, in each one of them, which will populate automatically if I was to add a few more. Uh, this will then get um, added automatically as well. <clears throat> and then I can come in and all I have to do is look at my task and say, ah, oh, okay, it's going to take one day or two days. And then the next one is going to take 10 days. Um, and each one's going to take, you know, a day each, for example. And if you've got two tasks, for example, let's say these both tasks can be performed in the same day. <clears throat> It's very easy. Um, all you have to do, you can do two things. One, you can manually change their dates to whatever date you want, and it'll automatically change the, the end date for it. Or you can just say, okay, they both need to be dependent upon row 35, for example. So I'm just gonna put 35 here and 35 here. And that day, the both of them will start immediately after um, the end date and you will be able to um, have them all start and finish the same day so there could be uh, there could be you you could be very granular with your schedule and you've got all these little tasks that have to be done and they can all be done within that same day so all you have to do is um, uh, is have the same uh, predecessor in all those tasks and they will start and finish on the exact same day all I have to do now is press the refresh Gantt and we will see you in another video.